everyone. Welcome back to our channel. John here from Bite Size Cruises. Here we are on the beautiful Deck 16 Sun Deck of the NCL Getaway. So we just did a nine day, which was supposed to be a Florida Bahamas Bermuda cruise, which is interesting. Uh, but it wound up being a Florida Bahamas Florida cruise because of a hurricane. We got redirected uh, from out of the Bermuda area, and then we wound up going to Nassau and to Miami. Here we're going to walk around the upper uh, pool deck, which is just the sun deck here, and we are going to wander towards the back of the ship, where you can see the ropes course and everything up there. We're going to head back towards some of the amenities here. The first one we're going to look at is the American Diner. The Getaway is a uh, ship that is about, I guess it's close to 10 years old now, about eight years old. Uh, it's still in beautiful condition. Obviously, it didn't get used for a year or so during the pandemic, uh, but it looks beautiful. It is the sister ship to the Breakaway, so it is a Breakaway class ship, the second in that series of two. So here we go into the American Diner. The American Diner is an upcharge, which means it's additional uh, to your cruise fare. So you have two ways to pay for this. If you have a dining package, you could use one for the American Diner, you could also pay a la carte, which is what we did here. So as you can see, our sailing was very quiet. This is not us up at like 6 a.m. trying to video the ship. There were only 1,400 people on this sailing. It was a long sailing right after Labor Day. Kids are back in school. So there were no one on this cruise ship. So it was actually pretty nice. It was very light. So as you can see here, uh, standard fare, similar to Johnny Rockets on the uh, Royal Caribbean. Uh, American Diner does burgers, hot dogs, uh, little upscale versions of that, and milkshakes as well, which you will see here in a second. Food was great. Uh, we'll be doing a full dining review of everything uh, that we had in the upcoming week or so. So you get to see that as well, where we compare all the different restaurants that are complimentary and an additional cost. Here we are on 16, heading towards the arcade. Love comparing Royal and Norwegian. They're the two most similar cruise lines right now. Uh, the arcade, definitely better on Norwegian. They do have a larger arcade, especially for this size ship. This is bigger than the arcade on Oasis, which is really interesting. So uh, lots of games. One interesting note, for some reason, none of the games of chance were working during our cruise. So none of the ones where you could win something or get tickets. My original guess, we originally thought it was because we were in port and you can't really have gambling while you're in port. However, it was that way for the entire cruise. So my thought behind that was it was just because there were not a lot of kids on this cruise. There was only maybe five kids I saw on this whole cruise ship. So I think they just shut them down or didn't have them activated for this cruise for that reason. But I could be wrong. But the arcade is fun. There are a lot of games there. You could purchase uh, credits. And uh, arcade games are a little expensive, but it's fun if you're bored or it's raining and you need something to do. So we wander around. You see a lot of nice seating here on the uh, sun deck. Where you could sit there and you could watch people come down the one water slide there. And then you see there is the standard jogging track up on deck 16 here as well. As we wander around, you'll see that there are a lot of water slides. So you do have your choice of some different water slides. The orange one is a just a normal kind of like slower water slide. The two water slides on the other side are racer slides. And there also is a purple slide that is probably for younger kids on the Racer slides, they are the ones where the floor drops out from under you and you just drop. They are a ton of fun, uh, but they are fast. So here you see up on the sun deck again, this is during the day. Uh, this is, it's probably in the morning, but it is during the day and it is very empty. We're going to wander around here as we head towards the front of the ship. We take a look down at the pool deck and we wander over here to the upper sun deck which is going to be on deck 17 and 18 which you'll see here as we pop up
This is a great spot up here as we head up. This is deck 17 you'll see here. You also see the entrance to the Vibe Beach Club. Funny on this cruise, we tried to get a press pass so we could get in early and check out some of the different areas so we could do a cruise tour. Uh, and Norwegian did not even get back to us, which is hilarious. So, um, but that's okay. Uh, there you see the entrance to the Vibe Beach Club. They have the nicer chairs in there. See, we could do it anyway, Norwegian. We can video down into your little secret areas. Uh, this is deck 18, which is the top pool deck. Great spot for sail away especially from New York, where you're gonna go by the Statue of Liberty, which will have some videos in our vlog series, which is gonna be coming out this week. Um, and we also see the other side of the Vibe Beach Club here has their own bar, little private area, total waste of money on this cruise because there wasn't a lot of people there. Uh, and also to the front of the ship there, all blocked off is the Haven, which we could not get into as well on this sailing because of said press passes, but we're not bitter at all. Um, it's a beautiful cruise ship and we had a great time. So it's really nice. So as we wind back around here, that's the end of the uh, top sun deck there. And then we wander inside on deck 16 towards the back of the ship. You are going to find this little hidden nook, which you can only get to through these, uh, through the sun deck there and through the back elevators is Spice H2O. This is an adults only area during the day. So if you need that little quiet space, if you're on a busy sailing and you just want to get away from the kids, this is a very quiet space. They have some uh, just beautiful backgrounds playing on this giant TV back here. And you will see there is a bar back here as well as a little dipping pool. It's not a full pool. There are two hot tubs back here and a dipping pool where you can put your feet in and sit in the water. Uh, there is a bar. There are also bathrooms back here, which is really nice, just in case you're looking for a quiet bathroom spot, which we all are. On the left side here of the back, or the right side, technically, of the ship, you will see the men's room on the other side is the women's room. So you do have a nice quiet bar here during the day. This is a smoking area by that bar, just as a heads up. And then you can see this is the area of the ship where they do some of the late night theme parties. They did not do that on our sailing, however, and I believe that is because uh, we had such a light sailing and this is such a big area that it would have looked uh, pretty crazy. So all of our uh, theme parties like the glow party and the ABBA party and all those were done on the main pool deck right at the little clamshell there. So just a heads up and FYI if you're on a big sailing or if you're on a light sailing. As we wander over to the other side, you're going to see the uh, little dipping pool where you could put your toes in and you could sit in the water there a little bit. Again, not a full pool but a nice little area where you can stay a little bit cool and just get your feet wet if you'd like to. And again, on this side, you're gonna see the women's room and we are at the back of the ship on deck 16 here. Beautiful views. This is also another cool spot for a sail away that doesn't get as crowded. So that's really nice as well. construction outside of our building so someone's beeping here just in case you hear that they're building some beautiful townhouses behind our building here in lovely Philadelphia so again this is a pretty good size space again adults only during the day at night it is all ages and they do show movies out here at night as well and you can come out here and sit uh, get a blanket and watch a movie at night which is really really nice as well and that is Spice H2O out here on the back. Unique to the Breakaway and Breakaway class ships, which is really nice. We wind back out. We're going to head up on to deck 17 here. You're going to see the entry to the ropes course there on 16. And then we're going to head up to the sports complex on 17. We have your basketball court. They also play uh, soccer here during the day. And there's a lot of competitions for kids and adults, free throw shooting contests, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, team basketball. And again, they have the soccer nets up during the day as well. So you can kind of get all your sports fix in. Again, on the funny thing is on some of these ships, I find it weird where they put the sports court. This actually works pretty well behind uh, – the ship there where it's a little insulated, you can see fun little zip line on the ropes course here. But on the sports court, it is 
behind the smokestacks there, you do get a little reprieve from the wind, so it's not actually that bad. Here we are, deck on 15, which is the main pool deck. Again, very quiet sailing here. You can see people out in the hot tub, a few people, and then there is a uh, pool here. There is also a pool in the kids' area, which came in handy if you wanted peace and quiet. There are bars everywhere here. And in the middle, there's a little marketplace during uh, sea days and port days where you can get towels and you could buy some uh, beach gear if you need anything. If you forgot a hat or you forgot, you know, sunscreen or anything like that. This is the kids' pool area. Obviously, this was closed for pretty much all of the week and they were painting and doing things since there were no kids. Here you get a better view of the slides, that small purple slide, the orange slide, and then the two racer slides. This is where they do the little marketplace. You can get sunglasses and all those things there. And you can buy town animals there as well. Just get a really good view of all the slides as well. The slides here go off the side of the ship. They're not as crazy as the slides on the Breakaway Plus class where you actually do the flip off the side of the ship where people get stuck all the time, which is funny. Uh, but this one, you do have those two racer slides, which is really nice. And just a ton of bar space. And this is where they did the themed parties right here where you can see the little uh, stage there where the band comes out. Another nice thing I really like on Norwegian on the pool deck, on the Royal pool decks, it's one side of the ship is the smoking area. In Norwegian, they have a little glass enclosed smoking area, which is really nice. Uh, if you're not a smoker, it's really nice because then you don't get all that smoke up there if you're walking through on the pool deck on those Oasis class ships. Another quick peek at just the water slides here so you get a good vantage point. You have to go up the inside there to get to the water slides. Here we are in deck 15. Uh, at the back of the ship, you're going to see the uh, beautiful Mandara Spa. And you're going to see the fitness center here. So if you do choose to get a little workout in on your cruise, there is a very large workout space. One side is going to be all your cardio. The other side is going to be all your weights. Training areas. As you come in here, you'll see there are a ton of treadmills. There is no lack of opportunity to work out if you so choose to on your vacation. Some rowing machines or the recumbent bikes there as well. And then as we head, in, head into the other side, you're going to see all the weights, all the circuit machines, free weights, kettlebells. And then you have your little... Uh, bike studio where they do spin classes and they have the little personal training space as well if you would like to get some training while you're here which is really nice there's also a little yoga studio where they do their personal training space right over here come back out here into the thermal suite this is a paid area it is a private indoor pool. These, uh, there's a hot tub there. You can see these uh, benches in the back here are heated benches, which are really nice. You have the beautiful waterfall in there. It's a therapy pool, so it is warm in there. Uh, this area was also very quiet for our entire cruise. It's also beautiful at night as you're sailing. There's also a scenarium uh, sauna a salt room and a steam room. So you have all those options here in the thermal suite. If you buy the thermal suite pass, which they only sell a few of on each of these sailings, you have access to this area while it's in operation, which is generally 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Except for the last day, it's 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. But you see all these areas here. This is really beautiful off the back of the ship here, which is really nice. It's all lit up very nice. You can see the inside of the salt room, which is huge. Come in here and sit for a while if you'd like. This is the thermal suite. Again, up there is an upcharge for this 
uh, on this particular sailing, it was like $300. It was a nine day sailing. It's usually in the like $200 range, which I think is 100% worth it on a crowded cruise where you can get this private uh, therapy pool. You have this private, really nice loungers that you could sit in that are padded. Uh, there is infused water out every day, which you'll see in a minute. Men's and women's locker rooms. Uh, just a really quiet, nice, private area where you can spend some time during the cruise away from the big crowds. If you're not in the Haven or Vibe Beach Club, this is another alternative. Heading over to a part that's usually really crowded during the sailings, the Garden Buffet here. Our ga Garden Cafe was not crowded again. This is prime breakfast time here, and you can see how quiet it is. Really, really nice as you come in here. Two sides, it's the entire uh, back of the ship here. So you get two sides of the buffet. Some days the for breakfast, only one side was open. That's how quiet our cruise was. With less than 1,500 people total on this cruise ship that holds almost 5,000, which is, again, it was really nice. It was a little weird. It was a little quiet, but it was really nice. Some people like the quiet ship. Some people don't like the uh, the quiet ship. As you'll see in our vlogs, uh, we met some really fun people. We met some people from Philly. We met uh, two people, Linguini and Al Dente. They will be stars in our uh, vlog videos, but they were awesome. And they were kind of disappointed because they really appreciate the, the crowd of the larger ships where the parties are a little more vibrant and those theme parties, there's a ton of people having a great time and you get to meet more people and it's a little more uh, fun. So for some people it was a little disappointing. Um, I'm a little more introverted, so I appreciate the quiet. It's a little nicer experience for me, but I do get the, it is more fun. It's more of a fun environment when there's a lot of people on the ship and you do get to meet a lot more uh, fun people, which is great. You can see your beautiful views. This is the pro tip. Go to the back of the ship here. Go all the way to the back, sit down for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you're eating in the garden cafe, it's usually a little quieter back there. Uh, and there's food all the way back. If you go all the way back, it's, uh, it's also pro tip where the Indian food is towards the back, which is amazing. So you see here how big the garden cafe is, and it was completely empty here for breakfast. This side is closed. Uh, for breakfast, uh, but we wanted to give you a quick view of what the whole garden cafe looks like. It's usually pretty hard to do this because it's so crowded. So it's a really nice space. It is at the back of the ship. It's organized really well, and everybody was really nice. So again, staff is amazing on all these ships. I think no matter what your experiences are on whatever cruise you're on, whether it's Norwegian, Royal, Holland American, doesn't really matter. The staff is usually awesome. Would you like to try your special for today? And say Mada with cream cheese with buttered sugar on top. Only for today. Different tomorrow. So, so try it now. <laughs> and it's yummy, yummy. Good for your tummy. Part of the amazing staff here. We come around every morning with little special treats and sing to you, which is really great. And then you just get to see some of the food in the buffet here. We had, we had a little eggs benedict. We had some crepes that they made, which were really really good we're gonna jump down to deck 10 here this is uh the studio lounge and a studio cabin this is a key card access area only for solo cruisers in a studio room so these are specially designed rooms for solos there's also a studio lounge where you can meet other solo travelers have snacks drinks during the day it's really nice we did a whole video on this which is so if you saw that this is a duplicate video but if you didn't, this gives you a good idea of what the studio lounge looks like. It's this two floor area here, uh, which is really nice. They have a bar. They have these wine machines, which are not included in your drink package or any drink package, just as an FYI. There is coffee here and water 24 hours a day with some juice and some snacks, which is really, really nice. And again, it's two floors on a busy sailing. This would be a great spot to hang out and meet some other solo travelers. So if you are sailing alone, this is kind of a great way to force you to uh, kind of get, get out and meet some people and interact and have some fun, which is really nice. Then we're going to take you down to the actual studio cabin with, that I stayed in, which was great. Very small. 
but really to me just enough space it was just me so I mean it does the other thing it does is I will say if I'm in a balcony I do spend a little more time in my room and this really forced me to get out of my room because I kept whenever I was in there I was like wow this is really small uh, you, you wind up not focusing or spending your time in there when I'm in a balcony I'll work in there set up the desk there's really no room to do that in here you could but it's a little cramped and there's just so many nooks and crannies on the ship, especially when it's empty. Uh, so I wound up working in Starbucks or out by the buffet outside in the mornings, which is really nice. But this is a great size room if you're traveling alone and you don't have to pay the double supplement, which is really nice. So here we're going to check out the deck six. This is on the inside of deck six and we'll take you around. So on most of the Norwegian ships, the breakaway and breakaway plus class ships, there is an area called 678, which is, guess what, deck 6, 7, and 8 in the middle of the ship. So that is where all of their restaurants are, all the shops are, the atrium, all those different things take place in 6, 7, and 8. So you'll see that as we walk through here, that is where most of the things are focused. They do have two main dining rooms here. Remember, Norwegian's more of a freestyle. There's not a big main dining room. So they have these two smaller dining rooms, Taste and Savor, which are open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So this is the inside of Taste. They look pretty much exactly the same, some different coloring schemes, but you wouldn't know if you were in one or the other unless you knew what the colors were. They look exactly the same. So this is Taste. Uh, you can see just a really nice, a little more modern take on a uh, main dining room. When you pop out here, we're going to walk through the obligatory art gallery, which is on every ship with the same exact art, uh, with all the same things that you have to pick up and try to guess the weight on, uh, which is funny. But I guess people love it because this Park West is on every cruise ship that I've ever been on. And I've seen these same paintings, the Thomas Kincaid ones, the strawberry in the uh, stiletto, you know, all the same things. And then as we wind up here, you're going to wind into some of the restaurant areas here on 6. This is teppanyaki, which is your hibachi uh, grill for Norwegian here on deck 6. This is not a sushi place, uh, just the hibachi here on Getaway. So as you come in here, this is our sail away tradition. This is what we do day one on all of our cruise ships when we go together is we all go to teppanyaki. So it's always a great way to start your vacation. It's a lot of fun, You, generally speaking. It's crowded, you're in there with a bunch of people, everybody's having a good time, and it really does kick off your vacation nicely. Again, on this sailing, very light, so we're the only people in Teppanyaki at the moment. And uh, we really had a great time, always a great time there. Also really cool, some of the people on our team have food allergies and they are super accommodating. Norwegian was really, really great on getaway at that. So we wind out, uh, wind up out here again in on deck six, and you'll see the middle here where six, seven, and eight kicks in. This is Le Bistro, which is the French restaurant on your right, which is really beautiful. They have inside seating and outdoor seating, even though it's inside. It is out on the little promenade here. And then on the left, we have headliners. So Headliners, the comedy club, also where they do Howl at the Moon on a few nights, which is a ton of fun. But you can see here the setup for the comedy club, which is great. Really cool venue, a lot of fun. I'm not a huge fan of comedy on cruise ships. However, this is a great space, and Howl at the Moon is a blast. So I do recommend going in there and checking it out. Those steps there head up to the um, casino and then head up to deck eight where everything is kind of situated in that little six, seven, and eight plaza there. As we walk, continue forward here, uh, you are going to see the atrium on, that we're coming into. The atrium bar is going to be on your right as you come in here. And this looks a little more familiar to anyone who's been on an older NTL ship like the Pearl or the Gem or the Jewel, where you have the atrium area, looks very similar to that, just a little bit bigger. 
So as we come into the atrium, you'll see this is where they do some of the game shows. They don't really use the theater for game shows anymore. They use this space for most of the game shows. Um, and then as you head, head over here, you will see uh, Starbucks. And this is an actual full Starbucks. On Escape and some of the newer ships, they have the big full Starbucks. Uh, here they have the Starbucks kiosks, but it's big. Uh, and the atrium's really nice. If you look up, that is Oceans there, which looks down into the atrium, which we'll show you in a few minutes. On the right here, we have the Internet Cafe. Uh, the Internet on the ship was not great, uh, but nothing new there. You're on a cruise ship. The photo studio here as you come up and then we're going to check out on the left is some of the meeting rooms and conference space. If you were uh, thinking about doing something like that on a cruise ship, there is some meeting space here. And then on the right here is the card room and the library, which uh, getting out of the pandemic here, they do have books back in the library, which is really nice. They were gone during the pandemic. So you have chess checkers, board games. Uh, they do a daily crossword, Sudoku, and some trivia in here, which you can grab every day. Uh, it's one of the fun things that we do sometimes, come down and try to do the crossword puzzles or Sudoku. And then as you wind out here in the front of deck six, you're gonna see the Illusionarium. Probably one of my favorite spots on the ship. It's a really cool venue on Breakaway. They use this as like a Cirque show. Uh, when it, when it first came out on Getaway, I don't know what they did, what this space was when the ship first debuted. It might have been like a big top or a Cirque show. I don't remember, but now it's a little venue where they do dinner theater and they do uh, some singing shows, and those shows were spectacular. So Broadway Unplugged. If you watch our Ten Things to Do video, the Broadway Unplugged show was amazing. They do a junk dinner show in here, which was good, not great. But definitely fun. You get dinner. It is an upcharge, $30. So it's up to you if you want to spend that money. But this is not uh, just coming in here for the Broadway Unplugged show or uh, the we saw Rock and Roll Piano Man in there. That was free as well. Now as you walk back out, this is the other side of the atrium. You're going to see the Shore Excursion Desk over here on the right, which is really huge, which is weird. Um you have cruise consultant for your cruise next certificates, the shore excursion desk, and then you have guest services as you go up further, which as you know is always crowded. Even on a small sailing, for some reason, people are always at guest services. Uh, but quiet right now. So as we continue on here, we are now at the front of deck seven and we're going to walk into the getaway theater so really pretty theater smaller than the older ships a little less regal uh than like the pearl where we were on the pearl it was like this beautiful ornate space this is still really nice it's just not as fancy as the older ships and that was where everything kind of took place on the older ships now with everything spread out into different arenas and different things the theaters only used really a few nights on this cruise. Uh, there were a few Q and A's in there. The burn the floor show is in here. The magician, uh, which we did not go to was in here. And then million dollar quartet was in here. And that show was great as well. Funny, not as good as the Broadway unplug show, but really, really good. The cast was great. And we'll have more on that on the 10 things you must do. And on our vlogs, you'll get to see a little more of the theater and those shows at least video you won't get to hear the audio because we can't get copyright strikes but this is the theater this is the way it's set up again it's kind of underutilized at this point but the theater is really nice uh, and here unique to uh, Norwegian there's a box office so you can come here and make sure you make your reservations for your shows which we definitely didn't need to do on this sailing uh, but it's there and on crowded sailings it's probably very convenient then we wind out here on deck seven and we're going to take you into oceans so this is the back entrance into oceans there is the little bowling alley here 
Those, it's not a full bowling alley. It's the little uh, small ball with the pins that drop down that are on strings there. Uh, but again, here's the ski ball and all that. Ski ball was off for the entire cruise. Again, I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe because there wasn't kids. And all these claw machines and everything were not available during the sailing. But Oceans is here. This is the local on newer ships, which is kind of like a 24-hour uh, diner. Here it's a 24-hour Irish pub. We can come in and get uh, food or drinks, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and late night snacks. So nice area if you just want to grab something to eat and there's nowhere else to go. Uh, you can get something here 24 hours a day, which is really nice and kind of unique to cruising where you do have a 24-hour place where you could sit down and actually eat food. Then we wander into the casino. And again, this will take you right into the middle where that six, seven, eight place are. So you get to see that area again from deck seven. And that's kind of the main focal point of the ship. The chandeliers are beautiful here. They do change colors during the day and night and they're set up for different things. Casino is pretty big, uh, obviously not as big as say an Oasis class ship or even the Breakaway Plus ones are a little bit bigger. To your right there, you see the high rollers room and then there are a ton of table games. One side, it appears, is smoking. The other side is non-smoking. But it's just a big open area, and that doesn't really seem to matter. On the newer Breakaway Plus class ships, it is a glassed, enclo glass enclosed area for smoking, which is really nice, and that makes a huge difference. Again, not a lot of people on this sailing, so there wasn't a lot of smoke. So pretty nice. We did play a decent amount in the casino. We were playing Deal or No Deal. We played some roulette. We had a good time. And then you wander back here on deck seven. This is Bliss Ultra Lounge, which is the nightclub. They also did some fun things in here. Uh, if you They were doing some things during the day, like classes. Sometimes they took place in Bliss. It's a really quiet space now on the ship. I remember on the Gem and the Jewel going and the nightclubs were crowded and it was really busy, but now with the theme parties up on the deck, the nightclubs are really quiet and there's really, I never see more than 10 or 15 people in the nightclub. Uh, this winds back out into deck seven and there is a bar here next to the club, which is bar 21. And then as we swing around here to your left is Shanghai's noodle bar, which is complimentary. It's included in your cruise fare. Uh, it's really good. It's really crowded for lunch and dinner. There are not a ton of seats, but they do have pho and they have noodle dishes, um, some dim sum. Really, really, really good. And then as we wander all the way to the back of the ship here, you will see the Manhattan Room. So the Manhattan Room is Norwegian's take on like a little bit of a higher upscale main dining room. This is complimentary, including your cruise fare. They do have singing and dancing in here. They do usually have some like jazz music. Um, this is a Tropicana room. I apologize. I think I said the Manhattan room, which it's not. It is the Tropicana room. On the breakaway ships, it is the Manhattan room. Uh, on the getaway, it is the Tropicana room. Uh, but it's exactly the same style room. It's just named differently for the getaway with a little more of a tropical feel. And you can see this room even when you're upstairs on deck eight in Cagney's and Moderna, which I'm going to show you in a second. This is us from up top. They had the dance crew from Burn the Floor in there. Uh, and they were dancing during dinner one night, which was really nice. Now, on deck seven, there is an outdoor deck where you could go out and walk. Uh, obviously, this is, as you could see, where the lifeboats are. If anything were to go south, there are plenty of lifeboats. Uh, unlike the Titanic. So as you wander around here, you can pretty much walk around most of the ship on deck seven, which we're gonna show you. We sped up here a little bit so you can see it. Uh, but it is nice, just another little space outside. Again, one of the big focuses in recent years of Norwegian is to get you closer to the sea. That's the whole premise of the Prima is to give you more outdoor space to get you closer to the ocean so that there are way more wide open outdoor spaces where you can actually see the water uh, and you can actually be close. So 
as you can see, they were kind of feeling their way around this even t close to 10 years ago when the getaway was built and released in 2014. So this will take you most of the way around the ship here. There is a cutoff uh, where it doesn't connect all the way around, which you'll see up here. It just kind of goes up in dead ends where you have to go in and cut out on the other side of the ship. And that happens on the pool decks as well. It happens on the pool decks uh, because of the Haven. So the Haven blocks off that deck 16, so you can't go all the way around. Now we're up on deck eight. As you can see, it's a really, really beautiful ship. It's not like overly like glamorous, but very pretty. It's like very modern, really kind of nice. It doesn't look aged at all. The ship looks great. So over here on your right, you're going to see La Cucina, which is the Italian uh, specialty dining restaurant, which is an additional fee. In my opinion, uh, and I, I, I try it, I haven't tried it in a few years and I tried it again on this cruise. It's not worth the additional fee, but it was better. So that's a plus. This is Sid Norman's Poor House. Again, a, a cool spot to check out a show. A lot of the performers, Sid Norman's is in here every night. They do, they have a band that does different themes like they did a uh, Fleetwood Mac night. This is uh, Dan from Million Dollar Quartet who played Elvis. He had a little Elvis after sunset show in here where he arranged some Elvis songs and did them. You can see there he was actually doing Elvis, which was fun. Great show. But again, La Cucina, the food is good. It's just, to me, like, it should be a complimentary restaurant. It's not upscale to me. It's just normal Italian food. Uh, but it's good. It's better than it used to be. I will say that much. As you go over here, you'll see this is kind of the whiskey bar on this cruise. And this is the cigar lounge, which is right outside the whiskey bar. And uh, we popped in here to grab an after dinner cigar one night. Again, very quiet. You can purchase cigars. One funny thing is it took like 15 minutes to find a lighter. So <laughs> bring your own lighter uh, or matches if you can get them on. As we wind, down, wind around here on deck eight, we're going to come out to that six, seven, eight place again where you could see the entire kind of middle of the ship there from six, seven, and eight where everything is centrally located. And you get to see the top of the chandelier here and you can look down into decks seven and six there, which is really nice. Then over here on our right, we're gonna see the Sky Vodka Ice Bar. This is really cool. It is an additional charge. It is $18 uh, per person. If you have a drink package, you get uh, 20% off, I think. Uh, you throw in your little poncho here and you put on some gloves and you wander into this ice bar, which is really fun. Cool space. Um, it is obviously all made of ice. It is very cold. You do get two drinks, so you could stay in there for 10 or 15 minutes if you can make it that long. The bar is made out of ice. These chairs are made out of ice. Uh, and there are little blankets uh, with little fur faux fur things that are there that you could sit on and have your two drinks in there. You could pick from a drink menu that they have. Really fun spot. Worth it. I thought it was worth it. It seems gimmicky and it probably is, but it's something cool and we had fun doing it. It's a cool experience, especially on a, a ship that was not very crowded. And we were there for nine days. So if you're looking for something fun to do, that's a pretty fun spot. This is the mojito bar there where they, uh, Obviously, you have a little piano every night and some bands. Here's your trade wind shops. The other shops were not open during our sailing, and we do not know why. We heard some rumors, but I don't know how true they are, so we're not going to repeat them. That is the raw bar there on 8 where you can come up and get oysters and different things like that. Uh, also, here is the beautiful upscale seafood restaurant called Ocean Blue. Again, this is an upcharge. Not included, this is a specialty dining restaurant, but this one is great and definitely worth it if you're interested in trying a specialty restaurant. Uh, as you can see on all of the specialty dining restaurants, 
They have indoor and outdoor seating, which is really nice. And we'll talk about the waterfront in just a minute, but you can sit outside. This is really great on port days. And even on sea days, they do a really great job of blocking the wind so you don't get uh, wind blown in your face throughout this whole journey. But you can see there, it's very calm as Meg and AJ are grabbing dinner out there at the beautiful ocean blue. This is wasabi, which is the sushi bar. Uh, we had lunch here uh, on one of the days and the food was excellent. Then again, as we wind out, sometimes they do little uh, shopping things here in this little hallway. You could see they were selling some things here, but that was the only thing that was open. There was no little store where they had things, which is really interesting. Uh, again, not sure why or what happened there, but they did not have it. And the little kiosk there is where they sell watches and jewelry and different things. They didn't even do a lot of that on this cruise. So I don't know if they had, or they were changing up inventory or just because it was a light cruise that it was uh, minimal. And then as we head to the back here, this is right above that Tropicana room. This is uh, the entrance to Moderno and Cagnes. So Moderno is your Brazilian Terraceria, which is a Brazilian steakhouse. It's the one where they bring out all the different meats um, and you can, you know, they'll cut off pieces of meat for you right at your table. Also the salad bar there is spectacular. That's another one where I haven't eaten at in a long time and the food was incredible. Have to uh, really give it a Thumbs up on that one. It was amazing. So as you come in here, they have the bar in the middle, the Prime Meridian bar. Uh, I think that's what it's called on this one. Yep, it sure is. On the left is Moderno. On the right is Cagney's. Cagney's is uh, specialty dining. So is Moderno. They're both additional fees on top of your cruise fare. Both worth it. So as we brought up a little bit, this is the waterfront on the getaway. NCL kind of really pioneered this space on the cruise ship where they took the standard outdoor deck and they really made it kind of a little more upscale. So you can wind pretty much around the entire ship again here on deck eight, doesn't go all the way around towards the front, but you can walk around the whole back of the ship and all of the restaurants have outdoor dining. So all the restaurants that are on this level have outdoor dining here, uh, which is Cagney's and Moderno. And then these really cool is you'll come up and see these little cutouts here. We did a separate little video here. They have these little cutouts that you can walk over where you're looking down on the water through the glass, which is really, really cool. Very fun. And possibly nerve wracking if you get anxiety about that. But this winds all the way around the back. If you are in Cagney's or Moderno, you will walk around the back here and you would see uh, Cagney's and Moderno right through these windows. And if you looked down, you would see the Tropicana room. This is uh, obviously the back of the ship and you get to see the beautiful wake from here. It's another great spot to just come and hang out and uh, get some peace and quiet. It was really, really quiet up here on this cruise. And this is where you would look down into the Tropicana room or into Cagney's and Moderna. And then we'll speed up and wander you around the uh, waterfront here. And you see here is where they have the wind guards and that really helps if you're dining out or just hanging out here. You don't really get a lot of wind blown at you. You can see people sit out here and enjoy the day. We had beautiful uh, sailing weather for this whole trip. Even though we were kind of heading towards the hurricane at one point, we got out of the way and the weather was really great. We didn't have any, you know, rocking or adverse conditions or any waves at all during this really, it was very peaceful. It's really decorated, beautiful out here. 
on the waterfront. See me panning out. I try to not include people in all the shots here. So uh, this is the Dolce Gelato. It is open during the day from like 10 to 6 on some days. It's weird. The schedule was weird. We did stop there and have some gelato. It's good. There's also a big shop there. That is also additional cost. It is not free. The gelato and the baked goods are additional. That is the outside area where you see the photos to the photo uh, shop there where you can buy like a GoPro or anything like that if you would like to. And then we get back up here to where the restaurants have space. You can sit outside and have a great dinner. And it's covered, which is really nice. So even if it was drizzling a little bit, you get cover from that. Just really great. So La Cucina, Cagney's, Moderno, Ocean Blue, and there's the Raw Bar. All have outdoor seating where you can sit out here and have a great meal. This is the outdoor bar for Sid Norman's Poor House. A great, another great spot for Sail Away too if you just want to hang out and have like a little bit of a fun atmosphere. They do show some sporting events, some soccer and different things on those TVs as well uh, during the day, which is fun. So it's a cool spot to hang out during the day as well. And usually really quiet. And you have your little chest set. This is where the waterfront ends. And this is where our tour ends. Thanks so much and please subscribe and like our videos. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.